Hello everybody, my name is Warner Chavez, SQL Server Certified Master with SQLTurbo.com and today we're going to talk about native backup encryption. This is the new functionality that is now on all both standard and enterprise edition of SQL Server 2014. Uh, basically now SQL Server has the native capability to have encrypted backups so you will no longer need um, those third-party tools that people were buying just to have encrypted backups or some people had a TD activated transparent database encryption and bought uh, enterprise licenses of SQL Server just to have encrypted uh, native backups you don't need those anymore we can do it now in all the additions and I'm gonna show you guys really quick how to take encrypted backups and how to restore them okay so let's jump right into the demo I have a VM already created with a SQL 2014 uh, RTM uh, I uh, first step is that you're going to require a master key, a database master key to be created on the master database. So I created it already uh, here as part of the demo. And if we go here, we can actually, uh, you guys can see I have it right here. So you can verify I already have it created. Uh, once we have um, the master key created, then we can create a certificate. So here I'm going to be backing up a database called Sales. So I created a certificate called just Sales Cert. So I uh, I create the certificate um, and then I just back it up. So I'm going to drop it first in case I haven't done so. And then we can just create it. That's it. And then once you have it created, you're going to need it for when you do the restore. So uh, back it up as well. And you have to specify uh, the path for the certificate, the path for the private key, and the, um, the password for the private key as well. So once we run this, you guys can see backup completed. And if I go into my backup folder, the certificate and the private key are there. Okay, so now we have uh, the three requirements. We have a database master key on master. We have our certificate and we backed it up as well because we're going to need that for restoring. Um, now let's just take a backup of uh, the database. So I'm going to do that here uh, through the GUI so you guys can see the GUI support for taking encrypted backups as well. So I picked the sales database. As you guys can see, I picked the path here, F backup. Um, now one thing you have to make sure you pick up that you are going to be backing up into a new media set that's required uh, for encrypted backup and then in the backup options here you can just pick encrypted backup uh, I would recommend AES to 56 uh, and then you can pick what certificate or asymmetric key you want to use for it in this case I'm gonna pick the certificate that I just created okay and then we'll just do that and backup has completed now if I go back to my backup folder you guys will see I have the two, the three files the backup the certificate and the private key so in a real production uh, situation what you would do is that you would protect this certificate and this private key separate from uh, the backup right because if somebody were to get uh, those two files uh, they would still have to know the password to um, decrypt the private key but they would already have two out of three things right so that's not recommended anyway so you need to uh, keep the certificate safe the private key safe as well as the password for the private key safe I recommend that you would keep that in for example whatever password management system that your company most likely has uh, so that those pieces are secure and they are separate from the backup itself okay so I'm gonna switch now to another system where I have uh, uploaded these files already so we can check out the test the restores okay so I have the backup and both the certificate and the private key here on C backups on my VM uh, this one's uh, running on Azure right now so uh, number one thing I'm gonna just show you guys what happens when we try to do a restore of uh, this uh, of this backup so here I'm just doing a restore file list only just to show you guys well, what the error that we get. So if I try to run that, you guys can see immediately it says, oh, I can't find the server certificate, right? So because this copy of SQL Server has no clue about the certificate that we use to encrypt um, this particular um, backup, okay? So let's assume that I just want to create uh, the certificate, All right? So I'm gonna create it here. Now note that the certificate gets created okay, right? 
but then what happens when I try to do the restore again I get a different error right it says a key required by this operation appears to be corrupted restore file list is terminated abnormally so basically I uploaded the certificate but I didn't do it with uh, the private key so it just gives me an error anyway that says you know this key appears to be corrupted okay so uh, let's just drop let's drop the certificate and we'll try to recreate it in a different way this time we're gonna specify um, the actual private key file and then I'll show you guys the different errors that we get as well anyway okay so that's done so now I'm going to specify the private key file as well with the certificate but I'm gonna put the wrong password on purpose and then we'll see what the error that we get so right away this one is just tells you right away you know the private key password it's not what it is so it's not gonna let you do it that way anyway so now I am going to create the certificate with the private key file with the proper password that I used initially and like I said these these uh, values you need to keep them protected you need to keep the two files protected and the password because those are the keys to be able to restore your database and read anything off of the backup okay so I can create it and now I get another error it says please create a master key in the database so because this is a brand new install of SQL Server if I check on the master database there is no database master key okay so I have to create one that's created and now we can try to import the certificate again now you guys can see the certificate has been imported and I can actually also restore now and read the actual backup Okay, if you guys can see, once we have the certificate imported, then we can read the backup metadata and then we'll be able to restore it as well with no issues. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. As long as you have uh, the certificate, the private key, and the password that you uh, use to uh, encrypt the private key as well, you'll be able to have access to your backup. However, if you lose any of these three things, you will be basically locked yourself outside of whatever was inside that backup so definitely make note of these steps for uh, your own recovery procedures so that's it pretty much uh, let's do a uh, recap of what uh, we went through so requirement you need to have a database master key and then you'll encrypt the backup with either a certificate or an asymmetric key in the demo that I show you guys it was done with a certificate uh, those things are required to restore like I show you guys all the different errors that we get when we try to restore and skip one of the steps um, so you definitely want to document it you want to practice it because the restore procedure is going to be a little bit more complex than just the usual backup and restore that you're used to doing obviously that is to be expected since the backup is encrypted we don't want anybody to just steal the backup file and be able to restore it on any server right so don't lose the certificate don't lose the key uh, don't lose the password to encrypt the key as well you need to keep those in a password management system hopefully um, so that they're secure and you can recover them and they're separate from where the backups are uh, and last just practice the recovery scenarios make sure you're not left with a useless backup don't be the DBA that got uh, locked himself out of his own backups so like I said document store those uh, pieces in a protect protected system and definitely practice the recovery scenarios and document the different steps to be able to restore your encrypted backup and that's uh, pretty much all there is to it to this new feature it's a pretty cool new feature they finally added it to the product and it's just you know for any type of database that you don't want the information falling in the wrong hands this is something that you definitely want to implement all right so until next time uh, go ahead and uh, try out the SQL Server 2014 uh, backup encryption see you then bye